Hey everyone, here's a quick update on my vacuum chamber progress. I've lathed a whole bunch of custom parts that I needed to uh, have to interface to the fittings on this diffusion pump. So we're looking at the underside of the vacuum table. This is the high vacuum penning gauge, and this is the diffusion pump. And this joint here is a, a universal joint that's connected to a shaft that goes outside the cabinet so that I can open and close the valve that it's actuating on the top of the diffusion pump. Over here there's another valve, and this one also has a, a universal coupler that I haven't connected a shaft up to yet. But what took me the most amount of time this weekend is machining some aluminum fittings here and here to interface this valve to the diffusion pump. So there's a standard for high vacuum connections called um, NW or KF, I guess. And it's basically two flat pieces of metal that are pushed together by this ring. So if I undo this, you can open the ring up and the two pieces come apart. So that's standard. However, there's connections that go to the diffusion pump that are similar but not quite the same. It has these uh, black plastic rings and there's an o-ring sandwich between the two pieces of metal but it's not built quite the same way. So I had to spend some good quality time on the lathe and uh, make up some custom adapters. I'm not even really sure what this thing is called. I think it's maybe an Edwards uh, specific adapter. You can also see I've got a thermocouple vacuum gauge tacked onto the end there and that was another custom adapter that the uh, gauge is screwed into. I just used a pipe thread on that one. This is the input to the mechanical vacuum pump and it goes into a T here and this side goes up to the first valve that I showed in the video direct into the chamber and this side goes through a valve here and then into the diffusion pump. So the way that this works is that we can uh, switch on the diffusion pump you know, with the bell jar shut and get a good vacuum in there and then if we want to change the specimen inside the bell jar what we can do is close this valve and close the other valve and close the uh, the valve leading from the diffusion chamber or the diffusion pump into the chamber and then remove the bell jar and you know bring that back up to atmosphere and then by opening this valve first we can clear the chamber of most of the air and then open the and open the valve going to the diffusion pump and get the rest of the air out so this arrangement of valves lets us uh, bring the chamber up and down to atmosphere much more quickly than we would otherwise. When I first pumped down the chamber I could tell that I had a leak because the pressure was staying at above about 100 or 150 millitor which is really much too high and I could tell that by closing and opening valves there actually was either a very um, uh, a, you know a piece of material outgassing quite a lot or an actual leak that was um, dumping air into the chamber. So one way you can test for this is using helium I've got a helium tank and what you do is you just spray the helium around the outside of your vacuum setup and wherever helium gets into the system it will cause the uh, vacuum gauge to dip. The reason for this is that helium has a different thermal conductivity than nitrogen and oxygen do. So when the helium enters the vacuum gauge it causes it to respond differently than it would to air even though the pressures might not actually be all that different. Also, helium is able to permeate through many different materials and just get through very small spaces in general, so it's, it's a good leak detector gas. In fact, it's the best, I think. In this case, the leaks turned out to be bad O-rings in the hot section of the diffusion pump. So there's two green O-rings. Uh, green probably indicates Viton. And these O-rings are used to seal the uh, diffusion pump oil into the bottom of the chamber. One's a drain and one's actually sort of a little dipstick. I guess over the years the high temperatures just destroyed that Viton. So luckily I had actual Edwards replacement O-rings uh, that I bought online. So the next project is to get some feed-throughs going through this plate here. And since the primary purpose of this vacuum system is going to be a vapor deposition machine, I'm probably going to come up with something like this. So I'm going to drill a large hole through the plate and then put this through like this. This is an aluminum bolt with a, a standoff that I threaded into the top of it. I actually might machine this whole piece out of a solid, um, out of a solid piece of aluminum or, or other material just so that I don't have to have another joint in here. But anyway, the basic idea is to have something like this so that inside the chamber I can put my uh, tungsten or molybdenum heater on this and then this will allow a large current to flow through the, um, uh, the, the boat, the heater, and evaporate that material. I plan to use a soldering gun to deliver the low voltage high current that I'll need to uh, heat up that tungsten and lemon boat heater and I'll have more details about this hopefully in the next video. But the amount of cross-sectional area 
for one of these aluminum conductors is roughly uh, equivalent to this bolt that I've got here. So I figure using this I'll be safe. And all, what I'm going to do is remove this bolt from the, or remove this aluminum conductor from the gun and just use the transformer to get down to um, a few volts at a few hundred amps. So it ends up being, or actually it's not quite that much, it's more like um, 260 watts total. So at one volt it might be 260 amps or something in that region. Okay, see you next time. Bye.